Professor K here. So I'm going to take a quick break on my idea generator app tutorial here. And instead of working so hard on JavaScript, we've been working really hard on JavaScript the past two parts. This is part three. And I'm going to focus on HTML and markup for a second here. So we're going to get the base markup onto the page. So we have some stuff to like attach this data to. Let's get started. All right, so we left off last time with going, getting data from the raindrop.io API for my bookmarks, and then logging out that data and playing with some new syntax for arrow functions and for as well. So this kind of new syntax for const item of data.items that allows us to skip all that like let i and i++ and stuff. It kind of just like does that in the background. Pretty cool, right? So here, I want to take a few minutes and focus on markup. I'm going to head to index.html. And you know what I didn't do? Just like last time, I didn't commit my stuff. I'm switching focuses. It's time to commit. So here, I'm going to commit my scripts.js, and I'm going to say adds authorization, or adds fetch call to raindrop.io API. Excellent. And you know what? As I think about this, I've added authorization. That's exactly what I did. So maybe now's a good time to finish this feature. Let's finish the feature in Tower. Here's my feature branch, finish feature. And now that's been merged into develop. This is a little bit different workflow than you've been working with in class so far. You've only been working with the main branch. Now there's a main branch plus a develop branch. In a professional Git workflow, we often keep these two separate so that we can develop and kind of iterate and all work together as a team in the develop branch, test those changes together and make sure they're ready to go out to production, and then make what's called a release. Once a release happens, it goes into main, and that's what goes out to production. But here, like I said, I'm just working in my professional workflow here. You don't have to have all of these layers for your project. Just going to show you how I work. So right now, I'm about to start another feature. I'm going to start an add HTML feature. Awesome. All right, I'm up on my new branch. And throughout all this, I haven't actually stopped my node code from running, compiling, whatever. It's still been going on in the background. It handles it fine. So you don't want to do that while you're merging, but you know when you're just switching branches and stuff, it's fine. OK, so I am going to just get rid of some stuff. I'm going to. Just put in an H1 here, and I'm going to just call this idea generator. And in my idea generator, I'm going to need like a button to generate ideas, right? So here's generate ideas, and then I'm going to need some sort of result container. So what would be like a good HTML piece for that? Hmm. Well, I'm thinking about that. I should probably put an ID on here. Button ID equals because I'm going to need to attach an event listener to this button, right? So it's a JS event listener, right? I'm not using it for styling or anything. So let's call this JS generate ideas button. And then I'll put a class ideas button. You know what? I'll just do ideas button here just to keep it consistent. I ain't get any further and figure out a HTML tag I want to use here. Hmm. Maybe an aside. No, no, no. Section. Section's perfect for this because it's going to be like a section of related content. So I'm going to do a section. And my section, I want an ID here too, also with a JS in front of it, because I'm going to need to append the ideas here. So JS dash ideas results is what I'm going to say here. I think that's good enough for now. I don't think this needs much more. I'm probably going to iterate on this further as I go, but as far as HTML goes, an H1, a button to generate ideas, and a section. You know what? If I'm thinking about this, I might want this to be down here. And I'm probably going to want this to say generate again after it's clicked. So I'm going to make a note in my JS here. So I'm going to say goal change button text to generate again after initial click, just so I make note of that so I don't forget later. What else might I need? I also need to add my results to 
JS ideas results, I should know what a result looks like. That would be a good thing to figure out here. What's a result look like? So a result could be an article, right? That would be a really good choice for HTML here because it's an independent piece of reusable content. Bookmarks are often marked up as articles, same with like news snippets. Article's a good, a good choice here. So this would be like article, what would I want here? I probably want an image. And marking up my HTML here is going to help me understand what pieces of data I need to pull here. So image source equals something. We can put a hashtag there just as a placeholder. We always need alt text, so I'm going to just put an alt attribute in right now so I don't forget. And if I think about what I want here, probably want an image at the top. I want a title. I want a description paragraph. I should probably have a link to go look at it. All right, so image, title, that would be an H2. Title here, paragraph, some description. And then I think I need an A tag. And then I'm going to do learn more about link title. Just for now, that might be like a little wordy, but I think it'll work. I should add some classes to this. Now would be a really good time to add classes to everything. So I'm going to add an H1 class. And I want to think about the namespace here. What do I want everything to be prefixed with? So I've been using ideas so far. So I'm going to do ideas title for this section class equals ideas results. And that way, when I go to style this, it'll be really consistent. Article class equals idea. And then image class equals idea image. See how there's a pattern here? It makes it really nice and clean and easy to read. And then when you go to style it later, it'll also be easy to remember what your classes are. Idea title, idea description. Again, you don't want to necessarily name it after the tag. You want to name it after the intention of the content so that you remember what it's for. And then let's do idea link, I guess. Oh, you know what? I want this to look like a button. I'm going to do idea button. OK, that feels good. Oh, you know what? That class might be really confusing with ideas button, though. So maybe I should do like an idea learn more. Yeah, I think that'll be less crazy. OK, so I'm going to save this and see what it looks like. OK, it's picking up some of my styles from the student site boilerplate, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I feel good about this. So what I need to do is take this HTML and because I'm dynamically generating this, once the call comes back, I need to get this into my JavaScript. So I'm actually just going to cut and paste this. I'm going to start by making this a string. So here, my goal is to create a template for my idea result. So here, const, because I don't think this is going to change, const idea template equals. And then I'm going to use tick marks here. Tick marks, again, this is just below the tilde on your keyboard, allow you to use variables inside a string. So this right now, this HTML is just going to be like one big giant string. I'm going to paste it in, big old giant string, which is um, fine, <laughs> not a huge deal. And we can even do a little indentation. And why don't we? even do this. Oh, so nice and tidy and easy to read. So what would we want to do here? What's the next thing I want to do? I create a template for my idea result, but I want to be able to call. I want to say this template should get a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of data and give me back the proper HTML. So I'm going to write a function. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to write a function to return my data. So here, my goal statement is to return HTML with data from item. OK, so because I said the word return, I know I need a function. Let's write a simple function. Function, I'm not going to worry about naming it just yet. I'm just going to do function, space, parentheses, and then curly braces. And then I'm going to put my idea template, the whole thing, inside it. 
because I don't really need it outside this function. And then I'm going to return idea template because ideally that will be <laughs> ideally pre-filled with all the data I need. OK, so let's indent that. So what can I call this function? What would be good to call this? How about function create idea markup from an idea? That feels good. That feels like what I'm doing. And if I thought about, actually, let's pass it. Let's do item so that it's really clear. I'm probably going to be calling this function from this while I'm looping through this array of items. And the reason why is because that's when I actually have the data to work with. So here I'm console logging item.title. But what if instead I just console logged item down here and over here on my four, I call create idea markup with item? I wonder if that would work. Let's find out. OK, good. I don't have any more. My idea is gone, which <laughs> my idea is gone. That's to be expected because I removed it from the, the HTML. And now look, I've got each of my objects here. OK, cool. So let's keep this over to the side here. And I'm going to open up this. And I'm just going to start looking through the data. And again, this console.log item is coming from line 20. So I've got access to all this item stuff here. Let's start by trying to return the title. Now, remember how I used this tick mark up here? I'm going to use this to my benefit. I'm going to dynamically put in the idea title right in here. I don't have to do any like quotes and string adding and stuff like that. I'm going to use variable interpolation. So interpolation goes something like this. Dollar sign, two curly braces. Look, see how it changed color? That's how you know it's now looking at a variable. It's using the same kind of color and kind of idea to help you remember that you're looking at a variable. So I'm going to try replacing this with do, 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 item dot. And then over here, I can see title. So let's see if I can do item dot title here. And here I've created the idea markup, but it's not doing anything yet because I'm only returning HTML. So I need to do something with this HTML in order to get it to show on the page. That means I need to find that container because what I want to do is I want to add this to the JS idea results container. That's where I want this eventually to show up. So here I'm going to do const container equals document dot query selector. And we only need to do a query selector here because there's only one ID per page, right? So JS ideas results. And what should happen is that down here, container dot, let's do inner HTML plus equals. So add to the inner HTML. I think this will work. Let's find out. OK, well, I see errors. I don't see, oh, maybe it's still thinking. Let's give it a minute. OK, well, I've got all my objects here. Oh, look at that. I've got all of my titles here. Oh my gosh, OK. All right, the CSS is real wonky, but I'm getting closer. I'm getting so much closer. OK, so inner HTML plus equals. The reason why I use this is because this is a string. Inner HTML accepts strings. So by doing this, I don't have to go through like all the document dot create text node or like sometimes I've seen this and I've said, oh, I need to like create real HTML out of it. And then it just occurred to me that inner HTML takes string stuff so I can just append to it and it's fine. So plus equals is like string addition. It lets you do that. I think this will work. OK, so here, what do I need inside my object? Do I have, oh, I have a media. Perfect. OK, so let me try to get my image markup here. How for a source, I am at item, item dot media dot media. So I'm in an object and I am at the first position, zero. So to get to a position in an array, remember you use brackets and then zero. And then I think I need the link. So 
this is an object, so I'm going to use a dot dot notation to get to us. Dot link. I think this will work. Let's see if I've got some if I've got some images now. <gasps> oh, they're huge. <laughs> Whoops. So I'll have to do some styling on those, but that's fine. Okay. All right. We're getting there. How about, and I think excerpt is what I want. Do I have excerpt anywhere else? Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to do the description now. I'm just going to go through here and just replace some of these placeholder pieces. Item and then dot excerpt, I think is what I want. I wonder if um, in my media it will tell me, does it give me alt text? Oh no, that's a bummer. I really wish it did. Okay. Hmm. Well, what else could I do? I could do item title and then I could do thumbnail for that bookmark. It's not the best, but it's something. Since I don't have alt text in my data, I can't do much about it, which super sucks. All right, let's let's save. Now's a good time to save and try again. Make sure that this is still working. This is going to take a moment to refresh. Okay. All right, so not everything has a description, but that's okay. And now I need to learn more about link title. So I need in my object, I need where it's going to go to. Here's a link. That's what I need. Item dot link. And then here I want to do learn more about, and then I even put in placeholder link title. So item dot title. And that'll, that'll be good enough for now. Okay. Let's try that. Head back to our browser. Oh, it's so cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I've got my data in. Now this is too much data. I don't need it. I don't need this many. So one goal I need to think about here, I think I have a goal that I don't want to go out and get stuff from the API every single time. I want to be respectful of the developers and I don't want to be making constant API requests. Plus it just takes a lot of time to fetch from the API. So I have a goal of storing the API data for a certain amount of time so I don't have to wait for the API call every single time. That's just a real bummer. You don't want to do that. So I can see that's one thing I could really improve here. What else could I improve? I have a goal and I think it's going to go somewhere in between this fetch and returning the HTML. I have a goal of showing two, two really important random bookmarks from my stored data. Because right now I'm showing like a bajillion, which is cool, but it's not what I want. I want to generate two new ideas together. So I got to show two random bookmarks and I need to do this each time the button is clicked. And that reminds me that I also have this goal of changing the button text after that's clicked. So I think I'm going to store those goals together. I'm going to put them together and then add my results to JS ideas results. That's a good goal too. I'm going to keep that nearby the other goals too. I guess I should keep all my goals in one place. It would be really much easier to keep track of everything if I did that. Oh, whoops. I put this in the wrong place. Let me figure that out. <sighs> Amazing, right? So this is really cool. In this tutorial, we got to go through, mark up all the HTML, figure out what that looks like, and then use that as a basis to actually start putting out data on the page in the structure that we want. So I think next, I want to work on some of these JavaScript goals. I want to, I like solving my functionality before getting too much into styling. I mean, the styling's bothering me but it's not too bad. I can work with it. I'd rather style once I have the right stuff on the page, which means I got to keep going with my functionality. So stay tuned. And next I'm going to start. I think I'm going to try storing the API data. I think that's where I'm going to go next. I'll see you in just a moment.